Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is part 12 of the uh, Ella Swap uh, into this 1976 C3 Corvette. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, click on the playlist. It'll get you up to speed as far as everything that's been done to the car so far. Um, also, check out the description in the video because I have a running uh, parts breakdown as far as everything that I've bought to uh, install into the swap. So the list will be uh, dynamic. So um, as I buy additional parts, the description is going to be updated as far as what the part is and the part number and the vendor. So if you want to follow along as far as uh, how I'm progressing along in my build, and if you want to do some research on your own, take a look at it. It will pretty much give you a build list of everything that I did uh, to get this thing done. But just as a reminder, this is a budget build, right? So I'm not going crazy on the uh, some of these parts. As a matter of fact, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be installing the exhaust manifolds from the Silverado from the donor vehicle. Um, from everything that I can tell, uh, they should fit really with no issues. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to mail them to the car, see how they do, and if there's any clearance issues or anything like that, we're definitely going to take care of it. So with that being said, let's get to work. All right, so before we crawl underneath the car, here's a little punch list I created, and th this is what I'm uh, chipping away at. So fuel pump wiring all set, knock sensors are installed. I took care of the, uh, the dipstick, oil dipstick issue because uh, in the stock location, it was gonna hit the hood. So I just basically tweaked it and, and bent it down a little bit. The wiring for the oil pressure center has been extended. It hasn't been terminated at the, uh, the center yet. Uh, gotta work on the vacuum lines for the trans shifter. Uh, I cleaned up a lot of issues with the wiring going to the starter fixed the, uh, the, uh, the fusible links, uh, working on the header mount, sneak peek. This is actually after we already took care of it. Modified the inspection cover. I uh, basically cut that to fit. So what's left? I uh, got a flash ECM, radiator hoses, electric fans, uh, throttle cable. Yep, we gotta do a throttle cable. <laughs> Harness, uh, that's gonna uh, probably be the big thing next. Uh, front accessory mounts, power steering, uh, seam line, intake, uh, mass airflow sensor, O2 sensors, and spark plugs. So that's pretty much the, uh, the majority of the punch list at this point. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more as we uh, chip away at it. So yeah, at this point, let's uh, crawl underneath the car, take a look at the uh, exhaust manifolds, and see how well they, well they fit. Okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, trim the, uh, the curve off the uh, downturn for the driver's side um, pipe. It comes out the exhaust manifold and I figured to show you a little tip. This is something what I do when I'm trying to cut a pipe and uh, I want to get a straight line. Well, as straight as possible. Just take a rubber band and then I uh, get it straight to my old eyeball and then I'll take a paint pen and then just paint the line and then go ahead and remove the rubber band and then you get a reasonably close uh, cut line. So then all you gotta do is take a grinder and uh, Fall in line and it should be relatively close. All right, so about five minutes later, all set. And it's uh, relatively straight. And uh, again, it's just a rough cut because uh, once it goes to the exhaust shop, it will uh, put an adapter on it and basically build the exhaust from there and uh, on the way back. So why don't we go ahead and uh, attach this to the uh, manifold and uh, fit it up in the car and see how it looks. All right, so a couple things on uh, while I'm down here. So we're on the passenger side and what I've done off camera is actually modified the original inspection cover to fit. So all I did was basically cut it and uh, got it as close to the flywheel as I could, well the flex plate as I could. So that worked out pretty good. And uh, I just got finished mocking up the passenger side exhaust manifold and downturn so that is the original exhaust manifold and uh downturn from the silverado so i think we're gonna be pretty good um got the uh the o2 sensor in there and uh plenty of clearance as far as if i needed to get it back out so uh as far as interference with any wiring or anything like that uh we're in pretty good shape because uh those are the, uh, you got the big 12 volt battery cable going into the starter. And then you got the uh, 12 volt um, purple wire up there. 
and then you have the big red uh, 12 volt uh, supply come out the alternator to charge the battery and then you got the one going back to the amp meter right so one thing I gotta do work on is if you look at these old school fusible links uh, see there's a big piece of exposed copper wire coming out of that connector so we gotta do we gotta work on that replace that and uh, I'm gonna put in new fusible links and go from there but yeah, uh, the dryer side, I'm sorry, the passenger side looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is, well, we'll go ahead and hop over to the passenger side and see if we, if we have the same experience on that side. All right, so with the help of my wife, we got the uh, dryer side uh, header mounted and we got the uh, downturn mounted as well. And there's the O2 sensor, plane clearance, really no issues. So it went in there pretty easily for the most part. The only issue I'm gonna see is uh, getting uh, some of the exhaust bolts in on the most rear uh, sides of the uh, of the flange. But as far as clearance, air, there's there's plenty of room. There's no uh, interference at all. So we're looking pretty good. All right. So as far as the driver side, I did notice one interference issue, and basically that's on that little bracket right there. And basically that is for the uh, insulation of the interlock cable that goes in between the steering column. In the transmission it's just catching on it a little bit uh, on the corner so i'm going to take the manifold back off and uh, i'm just going to knock off that a little bit of a corner give me a little bit of clearance and uh, that should be it so there's that bracket i was talking about so all we're going to do is i'm just going to relieve the left hand corner and uh, just give that header a little bit of clearance to uh, swing up and uh, go from there because it's just barely touching. It's probably interfering like by uh, by like a sixteenth of an inch. So not that big of a deal. All right, so the uh, pretty much all set. We got the exhaust manifold mounted up. So we, everything's on there for the last time, hopefully. Got the, uh, the gasket on there. Got the spark plugs installed on all four cylinders. And really no issues as far as uh, serviceability or anything like that. There's plenty of room uh, on both sides. And even with it being on the... Uh, against the uh the steering shaft and the box there's plenty of plenty of room on here to work on it um getting the uh the last bolt on uh cylinder number what's that seven back there i guess or eight so um wasn't too bad just had to uh kind of load the uh the bolt in with a set of pliers and once i i was able to get it in there just got a ratcheting wrench on there and everything uh pretty much bolted right up so other than the one in the uh, cylinder all, all the way in the back, everything is pretty easy to do. So, so like I said, uh, knock sensors are installed. That's pretty easy to do. Um, I've already started the process of extending the wiring for the existing um, temp sensor because we're gonna relocate the original temp sensor that was on the 350 to the back left corner. And we're also extending the uh, the line for the oil pressure gauge so we can actually use the temperature gauge in the car as well as the uh the oil pressure gauge in the car so we're just going to extend those two wires but as far as the oil pressure gauge and again um what i ordered is in the parts description of this video so what you're going to see is uh we're looking at the original oil pressure sensor right there that's that black thing with the little spade terminal and if you look, um, it's actually attached to the original point where the uh, oil pressure center was on the LS. Uh, there's an adapter that you can purchase, which basically goes into that that uh, port. And then uh, what I purchased is that little 45 degree adapter, which uh, mounts the adapter at a 45 degree. And it sits right behind the intake with no issues. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, extend the wire um, from the, uh, the original harness. We'll plug it into that. And then uh, once the engine is running, we'll have uh, the oil pressure gauge in the car working. So that's going to be good to go. Pretty simple to do. All right. So here is a shot of the passenger side. Pretty much the same thing as the driver. Uh, really no issues. Again, plenty of uh, area for serviceability. And uh, thing pretty much mounted right up, dropped right in. Again, there are no clearance issues at all. You can see it sits right above the uh, the frame, and uh, 
body mounts, all the engine mounts and everything. So really no issues. So, you know, like the oil sensor, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize a, uh, a secondary uh, port uh, for the coolant temperature gauge. So what you're looking at is actually the wrong one. Um, it's actually the wrong thread pitch. Um, so, but that part is on order. So what we're gonna do is the way this thing is gonna work, uh, once I get the right adapter, it looks pretty much the same thing as that one, but it's, it's a little bit longer. So that adapter will get screwed into that port. And then what will happen is the original temp sensor from the uh, their 350 will screw into that and the wiring will get mounted into that gauge or into that sensor. And then it's gonna pass the information along to the, uh, the gauge in the car. So we'll have to do a, a comparison as far as the mechanical gauge and uh, versus the, uh, the electronic gauge uh, on the other side to see what they are in a comparison and to see if they are accurate or not uh, between the two locations. So I'm sure there is gonna be a little bit of variance in temperature because uh, where the locations are, but um, as long as it's within you know, 10 or 15 degrees and uh, I can account for the difference uh, once I you know get a baseline off the other one, we'll be good to go. I'm not too worried about it. All right, so here is the finished wiring on the starter. So I already went ahead and, and uh, repaired the fusible links. They were actually good. So all I did was I cut them out from the existing harness. I removed those two plastic barrel connectors, checked them for continuity. They were both good. And I just re-terminated them using butt connectors and then shrink them and then case them in the flex foam. So we should be all set. And then I went ahead and uh, used a insulated clamp, which looks like we're going to replace because the rubber is pulling away from it. And uh, so, and then, uh, so, but it's holding the uh, the battery cable away from the uh, from the down tube. So that looks pretty good. And if you look on top of it, I'm using a as a ground as well. So we got the bolt passing through the clamp, passing through the transmission. And then there's a nut on top of it, so I can use it to secure a ground. All right, so there you go. The uh, stock manifold's pretty much dropped right in, and we were able to utilize the, uh, the original downturns from the Silverado to uh, kind of come off the header and uh, or the exhaust manifold and then build the exhaust off that. So again, this is a budget build. Uh, again, try and save as much money as we can. This car is never gonna be a show car, and, uh, and the main really goal is to get this thing back on the road. Uh, but it's definitely a good learning experience. Um, but uh, yeah, so if there's any comments or questions as far as anything I did in the video, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comments box and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.